Hey, how you doing? Nope, my name's not Shorty. I'm the lawnmower lady, and I like fixing small engines. Fun fact, my grandfather, his name was Shorty. He was a mechanic, so I'm pretty sure that's where I got my genetic predisposition for fixing small engines. Today's going to be a basic video on how to do a tune-up on a Honda mower. Basic stuff, oil change, air filter, spark plug, we'll cover it all. Okay, so today's uh, Honda quick tune-up video is going to be on a Husqvarna. It's a HU700H. We'll be taking a look at the oil, checking that. The lady who owns it, she said she bought it about four or five years ago, has never done any maintenance on it. We'll be taking a look at the gasoline. She says it won't start uh, or stay running. I assume it's bad gasoline. GCV 160 engine. Um, and uh, we'll be looking at the air filter and we'll be taking a look at the gas and finally the spark plug. First thing we're going to do is uh, check the oil level and see how that looks. She says she has had it for about four or five years but she doesn't use it that often. And the oil level, um, well it looks pretty clean. We're going to change it anyway. But one mistake that a lot of people make is they um, they check the oil on a Honda wrong. On a Honda, you only put it in as far as the cap is. You don't actually uh, screw it in. And you can see that this oil is right up at the full mark there. So it could be that somebody might have overfilled this just a little bit. We'll double check again. Yeah, we're going to change it anyway. So the next thing I'm going to take a look at is the gasoline and uh, see if it smells bad or looks bad. Yeah, I can sort of smell it from here. Um, this time of year, people often put uh, good gas in a bad gas can. It's easy to do, might have some water in it, but uh, it doesn't smell good to me and we'll be replacing it anyway. The other thing uh, about Hondas is they actually have a, a fuel tap on them, which is great. You should use it. There's a sticker on the side of this one uh, that tells you uh, when it's open and when it's closed. Uh, and if the sticker goes away, the easy way to remember this is that if the handle is in the same direction as the fuel line, then it's open. If it's perpendicular to the direction of the fuel line, then it's closed. It's a good idea to use it in case there's a piece of grit or dirt or the needle valve is not working properly. Um, if the fuel tap is on and that speck of dirt will cause the fuel bowl to overflow, then you come into your garage and it's full of gasoline. The next thing is to, we're going to check the air filter. You push in these two tabs right here and then the air filter cover hinges off. And uh, I can see that this one actually has a lot of dirt in it and uh, a pretty fair amount of oil all over the filter. That's either from blowback from too much oil or it might have gotten turned over on its side to clear out something from underneath it. Either way, we'll be replacing that filter. Okay, so I've, uh, you know, wipe out the inside where the air filter goes. Hit this with compressed air if you have that. Uh, otherwise, just make sure you get as many of the big bits of dirt out of there as you can. The new air filter is going to go in um, very easily. You always put the air filter in so that it's sticking out like so. It'll fit in very flush. And then um, you can either lay it in here or the other. Now there are two little hinge portions here. You have to make sure you align those and make sure they're hooked on there because I've seen some mowers come in where they didn't get hooked on there and then they just suck all that dirt right inside of there. And then push down on the tabs and then push in. Make sure it's attached. Next thing is uh, we're gonna uh, take a look at the spark plug and check that out. Uh, oh, and I just realized that the valve cover is bashed in as well as the spark plug cap. And ooh, there's a big hole, maybe some sort of uh, shipping defect or whatnot. Anyway, the spark plug uh, socket I'm going to use either a 13 16 This is a spark plug socket. It has the rubber boot in there that uh, can help you from breaking off the electrode if it comes in at an angle. I've recently started using a 21 millimeter with a magnetic tip in there because uh, the these tend to get stuck on the spark plug itself. So uh, anyway, that's what I'll be using. So the first thing to do is we're going to take off this spark plug cap. Sometimes it's kind of tight to get off of there. 
a little bit of good wiggling. There we go. All right. Put the spark plug wrench on there. Make sure it's seated all the way. And uh, wow, it was uh, completely loose. That might be one of the reasons that she was unable to get this to start stay running. Oh yeah, something's really beat up. Yeah, she's had a problem with this, so she'll be needing a new spark plug. As you can see, whatever caused uh, this damage to the front has also cracked the spark plug. It's bent over, so I'm shocked that she was actually able to use this. It was running pretty good, though. Uh, nice chocolate brown color is a good place to be. So we're going to be replacing this with the same. It's a BPR5ES, the NGK BPR5ES, and you can actually see the um, ceramic is actually cracked on both sides. I'm shocked that this thing even actually ran. Uh, anyway, uh, here's the new plug. And uh, <clears throat> one thing to note on some of these plugs is this particular style, unlike the old plug, has a removable cap. Uh, and you just want to make sure that's tight. Just double check that with a pair of pliers. Make sure that's tight. There you go. And then um, you want to check the gap on the plug. If you don't have a gapper, a utility knife blade is a pretty good indication of the thickness. It should go in there snug, uh, not too tight and not too loose. But then you start this by hand. You don't want to uh, try to use the tool on it right away because you want to make sure it seats well. And I'm concerned about this one because of the uh, damage that hopefully the threads are not damaged. Nope, there it goes. All right, and then once you get it hand tight, uh, you want to get your spark plug wrench on there, and at most, maybe quarter of a turn or just an eighth, all you really want to do is compress on the end. There's a compression washer, which actually makes it seal it up tight so you'll, the engine will have compression. All right? I am going to do one extra step here, and that is because the spark plug cap has some damage to it. I have an old tube of this uh, dielectric grease that all the aerosol leaked out of. Don't buy these, by the way. It's kind of a waste of money, but I have a Q-tip in here, and I'm just going to take a little bit of that grease, a little dab of that, and I'm just going to swab it on the inside of the rubber part of the boot. I'm not going to go all the way in to isolate the uh, electrode, but that'll help uh, cut down any spark that might be leaking out of this thing. That's why they tell you to check your spark plugs at night because you can see them leaking over. And then press that on and listen for that audible click. And uh, okay, on to the next thing. All right, so the last thing we're gonna do is an oil change on this mower. Uh, I'm gonna tip it over on its side. I always try to lay out something to catch any oil spills because I don't wanna leave you know toxic waste in my yard. Um, but a lot of people uh, don't know which way to turn over a mower if they say have to clean out the underside or if they get something caught on the blade. Easy, easy way to remember it is the air filter goes always up. And the easy way to remember that it's air, air filter up in the air, oil, oil stick, oil comes from the ground. So you always turn the mower over on the oil stick side. Well, it wasn't exactly the BP oil spill, but uh, these Hondas do make a little bit of a mess when you turn them over. Generally speaking, uh, most all these mowers will take about 20 ounces of oil. I pre-measure into an old oil jug. Be sure and check your owner's manual to make sure, but that's a good start to check that, and then we'll um, see what the dipstick looks like. Alright, so we're going to check the oil level here. Um, remember, on a Honda, you don't insert the dipstick all the way, just to the top. Some of them actually have a sticker on there, but unlike that, Briggs & Stratton, you do have to 
check them and then uh, just check the oil level and it's really really hard to see but it is exactly right at the top so that's a good level one more time and it's right at the top of the dipstick all right so this is good to go All right, so here's the acid test. Check the fuel tap, that's good. Give it a whirl. First pull, but not bad. So there you have it, short video, tune up, look for your owner's manual, get the right spark plug, get the right filter, get the right oil, you'll be good to go. If you like these videos, please push the like and subscribe button and I can do more of these. And as I like to say, mo happy, thanks for watching. Okay, so you carefully want to uh, remove the spark plug cap. Sometimes you gotta wiggle it a little bit. Oops. Wow, that didn't turn out so good.